Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your ticker guy coming at you from wonderful Niceville, Florida. Undoubtedly, you've heard about all the scandals going on throughout the world right now, and especially in America with the media and Glenn Beck and his announcements. They're irrelevant. For more than two years now, I have written tickers and attempted to educate the American population on what's really going on with the banking system, the bailouts, and all of the nonsense. Tonight, I'm going to tie it all up. And I'm going to issue a call to action for every man, woman, and child in this country. You, ladies and gentlemen, have been lied to. Knowingly. Willfully. Intentionally. Those of you college students who are, have economics classes, your professors have been lying. They have not presented this information to you. If they had, you'd be in the streets right now. You have had two Treasury Secretaries, the last two Presidents of the Federal Reserve, and the last two Presidents of the United States, that have both told you that it was necessary to save the banking system, that it was necessary to pour trillions of dollars of American credit, that is, new debt, into that system in order to keep it from collapsing. They lied. It is impossible to keep it from collapsing. It is going to collapse. At best, they have bought us a couple of years. At worst, they have destroyed our future. Here is the proof. This is the chart of debt and GDP in the American economy. This is from actual published numbers from our government and the Federal Reserve. Now I'm going to show you another chart. This chart was made by myself using a simple mathematical formula. Assuming a 5% compound growth rate for GDP and the same annual growth rate for debt that has actually been present on an average basis from 1953 to the present day. You'll notice that these graphs match pretty closely. There is a small difference in GDP, but the debt graph matches quite precisely. I'll alternate between them a few times in order to show the effect. You'll see that there is not a large difference between these two. Now I'm going to show you the extrapolation out 20 more years. Here it is. The blue arrow pointing down is where we are today and the arrow pointing sideways is where we will be, theoretically, 20 years from now. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not get there. Debt will rise at such a rapid rate that there is no possibility of paying it off. We've been told that Social Security will go bankrupt in 50 or 60 years and that we have to worry about it and everyone kicks the can. We won't make it 60 years. We won't make it 20 years. I don't think we can get another 10. Take a look at where that arrow would be 10 years from today. And tell me how, even if GDP rises 5% a year for the next 10 years, a goal that every economist in the United States says is impossible, we could ever pay the interest. In the year 2000, the correct solution was to force the contraction of credit to a sustainable value and take whatever hit might come from that. It would have been, by my figures, about 10% of GDP. A very mild depression or a very serious recession. Instead of doing the right thing, Alan Greenspan, in concert with the government, decided to loosen credit further and blow a bigger bubble. They tried to kick the can. That is why we are where we are today. We cannot do it again. The graph makes clear, ladies and gentlemen, that it's not possible to continue to do this. There is no solution other than to intentionally force the default of that debt which cannot be paid and take whatever damage comes to the gross domestic product of this country. Yes, it will be bad horribly so. But if we do it now, it will be bad on a scale of the 1930s or 1873 and we will recover. If we put it off, we will lose our nation. This is not conjecture. This is mathematics. 
every major bank in this country will likely be driven out of business by doing the right thing. All of them. The government knows this. The Federal Reserve knows this. And in fact, the Federal Reserve itself may be driven out of business because it has contaminated its own assets and balance sheet. Nonetheless, it must be done. Don't argue with me and my conclusions. Argue with the mathematics and the charts. I wish you the best of luck. And while you're at it, ask your teachers, ask your professors, ask your Congress people, some of whom, by the way, are business people and bankers and know this. Why are they lying to you? Yes, we have a very rough road ahead of us in America, ladies and gentlemen. But we need to take that road now. Well, we can still make it down. Rather than going off a cliff. The time to act in a correct fashion was in 2000, then again in 2007, then again in 2008. We cannot kick the can any longer. I'm your ticker guy, and that's my opinion.